I, I want to invite you, um, as I preach this message, not just to a sermon, because this is more than a sermon. This is more of a prophetic, if you will, uh, that song. This is that song, right? It, it, it's literally, I want you to see ahead. I want you to see your future and all the things. But the Lord uh, began to stir my heart last December. Uh, and I was in a season, I was frustrated. I was in a season that I was like, God, I, like, I, I, I've been doing this thing, full-time ministry for 25 years. It'll be uh, next month, it'll be 25 years. And, and I need to see something new. I, I, I feel like I've prayed, I cried, I, and I just felt empty. And this message came out of my devotion time. And so I want to invite you into my devotions this morning. Is that all right? 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, and it says this, it says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel, Samuel was a prophet. He served the Lord by assisting Eli. Eli was a judge. And, and it says, now in those days, messages, somebody say messages. Messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation on purpose, and you'll, you'll get that later. It says, one night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel, this young prophet, was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. And suddenly the Lord called out to Samuel, Samuel! I love it. <laughs> what is it? And he got up and ran to Eli. And he says, here I am. Did you call me? Eli said, no, homie, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So he did in verse 6. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel, again. And, and he got up and he went to Eli. And he says, here I am. Did you call me? And he says, no, I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. In verse 7, Samuel did not know the Lord because he had never heard a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli said, no, it wasn't me. It must be God. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And I love this. So Samuel went back to bed. Great city today, I want to preach to you from the idea there's something missing. Look at, you, look at the person next to you and says, there's something missing. Come on, tell them, tell them there's something missing. Look on the, the person on the other side of you and tell them, you need a breath, mint. Tell them, tell you, <laughs> you need a breath. That's what's missing. Your breath is missing toothpaste. Come on. There's something missing. Father, I pray that you do something amazing today in this place. God, more of you and less of us. Father, would you speak to us today? Would Jimmy get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do his thing? In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. There's something missing. Uh, Irene and I are, are, are different. Um, not only is she female and I'm male. <laughs> I'm tall and, and, and she's short. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but we're different because she loses things and I don't. <laughs> My wife is a habitual loser. Don't tell her I said it. Not like a loser and like coming in last place, but like, a, like, like, like she loses things that she just had. Where's my purse? I don't know. I don't manage your purse. Uh, I, my wife loses things to the degree of she will lose her phone while she's talking on it. <laughs> She'll literally be like, Jimmy, I can't find my phone. I'm like, you're on it. It's right by your ear. But one thing she loses a lot is her keys. Is, is anyone, is any key losers here? Like, like, you know you need them. Like, you know, like, you cannot get to where you're supposed to be without the keys. But it's crazy when you're, when you're not thinking about the destination. Like, you will lose the thing that accesses that destination. In fact, I'll lose my keys sometimes. And I'm like, man, uh, 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 where, where did I put my keys? And, and, and it really doesn't matter unless I have an appointment, and especially an appointment that is important, an appointment that is important to me, an appointment that is important to my soul or my health, and especially if I lose my keys when I've got other passengers that are also supposed to be there, like my kids, like a, 
an appointment with my kids, an appointment with my family. And I realized this, that the anxiety of what I lost or what I've lost, it, it causes frustration. And I feel discouraged. I've, uh, you know, my blood pressure goes up because I know where I'm supposed to be, but I can't get there because of what is missing. Somebody say there's something missing. And, and what I've been asking the Lord in my own life is, what, what is the key thing that's missing in my life? that has me feeling discouraged after worship services? What's the thing that's missing in my life that, man, I, I'll be in God's presence, and, and on Sunday, man, I feel amazing, and, I'm, and I know my healing's coming. It's just a matter of time. I hope I remember those words later. But I, I, and then I go out, and I feel like, is it really coming? You mean you, Pastor Jimmy? You preach God's word and you feel like that there's something missing? No, I'm talking about I'm tithing and I'm, and I'm going to church and I'm preaching God's word and, I'm, and people are coming to salvation after the services, but I feel empty. I don't know if that's you, but I, I, I think it is. I, I think many of us, if we're honest, we, we feel like, man, there's something in my life that's missing I should be content and I should be satisfied and I, uh, 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 my marriage is better than it's ever been or my, or my life is better than it's ever been but something just doesn't sit right with me. I feel like that there's a hole, that there's a yearning, that there's, uh, and I don't tell anybody about it because, you know, I don't want anyone to think that I don't have faith but if I'm honest, I got faith and fear kind of wrestling back and forth at the same time. I know I, I've got a destiny, but I've got discouragement and disappointment. I, I know I've, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe I, I got a lot of people. You got a lot of people around you. People are calling, but you still feel isolated. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? There's something missing. I got the house. I got the car. I got the kids. Uh, maybe I'm single, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I've learned to be satisfied with this, and it's not a man, it's not a, it's, it's not a relationship that I need, but there's something just missing. I don't feel God like I used to. I don't, I'm in church raising my hands, but I wonder, has God forgotten about me? Is there something missing? I get the opportunity to preach around the world at different churches, and I see churches that, man, God was moving in one season, and, man, the, the, the seats are packed, and, but I, I'm in the backs with the pastors, and, you know, after service or before service, and they don't feel the same. The, the passion is gone. The, the dream feels dwindled. They, they feel heavy. It's almost like there's an, an oppression over them. And I ask myself, what is missing? This is exactly where I was last December, and then the Lord dropped this passage in my heart. And if I'm honest with you, I'm going to preach this with you today. I'm preaching to myself too. Is that okay? Because I feel like even as I'm holding this microphone right now, like what is it? I'm not in sin. Like, like, God, are you there? There's something missing. And then I read this specifically in the New Living Translation. It says, meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. And if I'm honest, before I started preaching this message, that's where I stayed, right there. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel, I just kept reading it over again, served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. God, I'm in the middle of my devotions. Why do you have me here in this passage? Uh, meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord. Meanwhile, Jimmy served the Lord by assisting. Meanwhile, Grace City served the Lord. Meanwhile, Andrew served the Lord. Meanwhile, Christina served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, and here it is, messages from the Lord were rare. 
And the Lord began to show me what's missing. Messages from the Lord. What's the key? Messages from the Lord. How, how do I parent in this tumultuous culture of compromise? Messages from the Lord. How do I stay married uh, 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 when everyone is getting divorced uh, uh, and, and th when things don't work out? God, God, how do I do this? Messages from the Lord. God, how do I stay uh, single, raising these kids by myself? And, and you know I've been faithful. Messages from the Lord. Like, God, what do I do in the midst of this season? God, when, when I got more month than money and, and, and my bills and my financial, and I want it, messages from the Lord. God, my discouragement and my mental health and my emotional health is not great in this season. God, how do I get it? Messages from the Lord. Well, well I, I, I've come to find out that I will never get to my destination unless I find the key to what's missing. And the key to what's missing there's prophetic yeah. messages from the Lord. And I asked myself, I said, Jimmy, you read your Bible, but yet you still saying messages from the Lord are missing? I said, yeah. I said, I felt the Holy Spirit say this. Like, in Scripture, that's what I said. But I'm still speaking today. And I've asked the Lord in my own life, what are you saying through what you said? Right. I, I, I drove by uh, uh, on, on 98, uh, the land, the 50 acres, that does not represent a church building. It represents the kingdom of God being established right. in Lakeland and all around the world. It represents marriages coming back together. It represents children walking in their God-given destiny. Uh, it, 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 it represents, come on, somebody, healings and, 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 and blinded eyes opening. And, and it represents, and I can see it. And as I, I pulled over on the side of the road when Maya showed it to me, and, and I said, God, you, this would have not never happened without a message from God. You are not sitting in a chair. You are sitting in the fulfillment of a message. You are not, come on, somebody. God has spoken to you. You didn't just decide to come here. A message from the Lord that God gave Andrew and Christina years before this church was, when this building was something else. It was a message from the Lord. It was a prophetic word from God. I know you got a fancy resume, but a resume with no revelation might be what God said, but it ain't Totally what God is saying. I need a message from the Lord. God, I need a prophetic word from you. I, 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 I need to know how, how, to, how to walk in this see nothing season. God, when my family, when my daughter is in the hospital, come on, somebody, for 14 days, I, I, I don't know what to do. Should I, I need a message from the Lord. I don't need a follower on Facebook. I don't need a follower on Twitter. I'm not looking in the comment section to see what other people are saying. God, in this season, I want to know what you are saying. God, what's your thought on this? God, what's your idea on this? God, what door should I open? God, what door should I close? God, matter of fact, don't give me choices in this season. I just want the divine, perfect will of God, which is a message from the Lord. I need a message, man. And when I looked at this passage of Scripture, huh, it says that messages from the Lord were rare. Can you put that scripture back up there? And then it goes on to say what happens when messages are rare. Visions are uncommon. Oh. When messages are rare, vision is uncommon. When messages are rare, Visions are uncommon. No prophetic word, no prophetic purpose. Oh, God. When messages are from the Lord are rare, we find ourselves stuck. We find ourselves in the wilderness. Yes, we got out of Egypt. But sometimes escaping it ain't good enough. What does God want in the next season? 
You prayed for the marriage and you got it. Now how do you keep it? Message from the Lord. Ooh, I feel like I, 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 like I could stop right here and I ain't going to lie, lay on the floor and cry and have Chase and the team come sing. Because what I've recognized in my life, that I'm not a product of my abilities. I'm not a product of my talent. I'm not a product of my bank account. I'm not a product of being good. Come on, somebody. My wife is way too good looking for me. I am a product of a message from the Lord, a prophetic declaration. I, I just came to tell you that before your parents gave you a name, God had already spoken a purpose and a destiny for you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were wrought in secret and God has an eternal destination that you have to get to that has nothing to do with kind of what kind of car that you drive or what keys that you have in the natural. It has everything to do with the prophetic declaration just like he spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 when he says, I knew you before you were born and I set you apart. Let me tell you something. The reason that it's not working in this season is because you have been set apart for something different than what you're trying to go after right now. You know what that set apart means? A prophetic word? It means God. Here's what I've been praying lately, and it's a dangerous prayer. Are y'all ready? May nothing in my life work unless you said it. <laughs> that land is a prophetic message from the Lord. This church is not made up of walls and curtains and chairs. This church is made up of God saying, Looking down from heaven at Lakeland, saying there's some people, come on, somebody, that are desperate for a Savior. There's a city that's desperate, come on, somebody, for the presence of God. Chase and the team aren't writing songs on earth. They are pulling down prophetic messages from heaven that need to be spoken in the season that God has called them to speak it in. And it's supposed to encourage you. It's supposed to push you forward. It is supposed to say more. It's supposed to say, I feel my healing coming. It's just a matter of time. And maybe you're new to church and you're like, man, what's this prophet word? What, what, what is that? I want you to know that as I started looking at this passage of scripture, I said, I said well, let me just break this down. A prophet was a spokesman for God. He, he spoke in God's name and by God's authority. The, the prophet proclaimed the message that was given to him by God. A prophet was also known as a seer. So in other words, when there's a prophetic word, it's not just to get you to say something. It's to get you to see something. It's almost like virtual reality glasses. Come on, somebody. Virtual reality glasses. You can be in one atmosphere. Are y'all with me? You can be in the midst of a crowd, but when you put on those virtual reality glasses, it takes you somewhere else. I'm telling you right now, you need prophetic virtual reality glasses that says, I might be in this situation, and people are wondering, how are you praising God in this situation? How are you giving God praise in this situation? I see something that you don't see. Come on, somebody. We have to stop allowing what we're looking at to determine determine what we see. I don't care what I'm looking at, pastors. I see something different. I don't care my circumstances. I see something that nobody else can see. You think you just stumbled upon that land? Mm -mm. That was a reserved for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Somebody else tried to get it. Somebody else might have offered more money for it. I don't know the circumstances. But when you see something that God showed you and nobody else can see it, it doesn't matter who's on it before. It don't matter. Come on, somebody. Who puts an offer in? It don't matter what bank. I'm telling you right now, you have to stop allowing what you're looking at to determine what you see. Somebody say, I see something different. Messages from the Lord. I, I, need, I need a vision. This, I need a prophetic word. Amos 2.7 says, indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. And Matthew 24.35 says, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. When messages are rare... Visions are uncommon. The famous vision scriptures, without a vision, people perish. I love that. It's like I preach that. Without a vision, people perish. I can preach that. But without a word, people panic. Without a vision, people perish. They die slow. But without a word from God, they panic. They have anxiety. Where are my keys? Where, where's, my, where's my vision? Where's my promise? Where's my, where's my man? Come on, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Come on, y'all. Come on, single people. Like, where? Where? Come on, God. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. But if you have a word from God, you won't allow who slides in your DMs, come on, somebody, to, 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 to waver you in what God told you. When you have a word from God, you can stand in a see-nothing season and says, I'm waiting on the Lord. When you have a word from God, you can cry, but you know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. When you have a word from God, you begin to say that no weapon that is formed against me is going to prosper. When you have a word from God, you'll say, greater is he that is in me than he that that is in the word. When you got a word from God, you will say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I am first and not last. When you got a word from God, come on, lady, and you ain't got your hair done, and you go to the grocery store in your PJs, but that man ain't going to see your looks. He sees the word that's spoken to him. And when words come together, when a word meets a word, come on, somebody, the dream <laughs> can come to pass. I need a word. I get it. I was preaching the word with yesterday's message. I need a message for today. I'm telling y'all, you don't get this. I don't want to preach this. I want to preach something that's going to get you, like, fired up. And No, but I want to preach something that's going to get you consistency. You have to understand Samuel. Why, why Samuel? I love this passage of scripture. I, I love First and Second Samuel. And, and I'm going to drop point one to you first, and then kind of give you some context of this passage of scripture. And if you're taking notes, which you should, if not, just take a picture of the point. It's going to be up there. Ready? Say, don't miss. The meanwhile. <laughs> Don't miss the meanwhile. And, and you may say, well, what does that mean? Well, as I was reading all of the translations, as I do when I'm studying a message, I find the one that's speaking to me the most. And the New Living Translation was speaking to me the most. And it starts out by saying, meanwhile, the boy Samuel said, what? And I kept saying the word, Meanwhile. Come on, professor. Over and over. Meanwhile. Somebody say meanwhile. meanwhile. Now, if you were in a movie or you were a director in a movie and you've watched a movie, you've, that should be all of us now, uh, right? No one's a director, probably. When the script says meanwhile, in the script, what happens is, is they're in one scene and they transition to another scene that's going on at the same time. So whenever you see a word like meanwhile, 
You're saying, man, at the same time, while this was happening, this was happening, I just couldn't see it. At the same time. Somebody say at the same time. So when I looked at the scripture and I said, meanwhile, Samuel, why the prophetic word now? Well, first and second Samuel is a book of transition. It's, it's showing that God is doing something. You see, the nation of Israel was in transition. They had been ruled by judges and, and, and priests, and, and, and this book is beginning to show us God's succession plan from what was to what he wants to do as it concerns the temple, as it concerns bringing heaven to earth, as it concerns Jesus, as it concerns, come on somebody, covenant from uh, 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 Adam and Eve's mistake uh, uh, and, and they begin to transition and, and, and what you'll see is this Word Samuel comes. Meanwhile, two things going on at the same time. Israel's falling into sin. Israel keeps worshiping idols. Israel has to go to a priest. Come on, somebody, uh, to get to the presence of God. Eli is represents the old season. Eli represents what was. Eli represents what was former. Come on, somebody. And then Samuel. So when Samuel shows up, we begin to see that God's not tolerating the Eli season anymore. Wow. So he speaks a message. Wow. Samuel. I know that sin is going on. Meanwhile, prophetic word. I know the people want a king, but God wants a kingdom. Meanwhile, I know they have to go through, come on, somebody, rituals to get to the presence of God. I got to go to church. I got to serve. I got to tithe. I, I got these rituals. Uh, but rituals don't do it anymore. Come on, somebody. I got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I can't bank my life off of what is in Pastor Andrew and Pastor Christina. I need a word for myself. Somebody shout, meanwhile, two things going on at the same time. That's what a prophetic word does. Samuel is not just a person. Samuel is an indication of a prophetic move that God wants to do in a season. Come on, somebody. Of see nothing. But this word represents the message that God is saying, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm excited. Y'all like, is he angry? No, I'm just passionate because I'm excited. Because I see myself shifting. I see you shifting. I don't want to get to this building and get, come on, somebody over on 98 with the same anointing that was here. God has a prophetic word that's going to get us more. That's going to get us more people. That's going to cause more. Come on, somebody, anointing. The prophetic wakes you up. The prophetic pushes you. The prophetic, what it does is it creates an appetite for something new. It's a message from heaven. So when you say meanwhile, what we're saying is, is that at the same time, I want you to know that a prophetic word, yo, I just turned 50. And I didn't have pants like this, but my daughter said, you're coming to my church, you need to look cool. And I was like, I was like, does it look dumb? And she's like, no, it's perfect. And I was like, I feel like the tassels and where the woman with the issue of blood touched, come on, somebody to him of my garment. <laughs> This ain't me, but I hope if it offends you, I'm sorry. I just, I, I'm, I'm doing what my daughter told me to do. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have a suit at my hotel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but meanwhile, I, when I turned 50, they gave me these glasses because I couldn't see. And they're called progressive lenses. Come on, y'all. If I don't have them, if something this close, I can't see it. It's got to be way far off for me to see it. But I realized that the doctor's like, you're not just blind close, you're blind far. So I got to get progressive lenses. And when I put these on, they allow me to see what's close. And they give me sight for right now. But when I look up, they also allow me to see what's far. In other words, a prophetic word gives you hope 
for what's going on right now. Come on, somebody. And also vision for what is supposed to be. That's why I don't care if the building doesn't happen in two years. It don't matter. I got, come on, somebody, hope for what's going on right now. But I can also see what's going on over here. Somebody shout, meanwhile. Meanwhile, come on, somebody. Meanwhile, all hell is breaking loose right here. But meanwhile, God is working it all together for my good over here. Meanwhile, my kids aren't serving. Come on, somebody the Lord right now but meanwhile the Bible says that my whole household shall be saved meanwhile I feel that there's a meanwhile anointing in here somebody wants to give up but meanwhile God is working it all together for your good if it ain't good yet God ain't done yet meanwhile that's right see if he can get that now, yeah. as a child, yep. come on, parents. Yep. We, we've allowed lack of a message to let us not see the meanwhile. All we can see is the misery. But let me have the childlike faith. Yeah. Uh-huh. That knows that when I'm hungry, somebody going to feed me, even though I can't feed myself. I'm going to go ahead and work that right now. I, I can't walk, but somebody going to pick me up to take me where I'm supposed to be. That child just gave a prophetic word. And if we can get that childlike faith in us, come on, somebody, before bills came and before disappointment came and before discouragement came, that says, meanwhile, come on, somebody, give me the faith of that little boy. I know my healing's coming. It's just a matter of time. That's all the words I know. I know my breakthrough's coming. It's just a matter of time. Come on, ladies. I know my man is coming. It's just a matter of time. Come on, dudes. I know my lady's coming. It's just a matter of time. I know the anointing is coming. It's just a matter of time. I know my dream is coming. It's just a matter of time. Come on. I know the joy is coming. It's just a matter of time. I know my peace is coming. It's just a matter of time. I know that building's coming. It's just a matter of time. Grace City, can you give God some praise? Somebody show me why. So what do we do? I'm going to skip point two and go to point three. So what do we do, Pastor? We stop asking a rejected season, is this God? We stop asking former desires is this God. Because if I, I don't know who this is for, I've never said this before. If I don't realize that I'm still asking God to do something from a past desire, a past message, in my life what I'm asking now is God, give me a new message. So I only seek what's new. God, give me a new word, God, I need a new word, God. I, so I only seek what's new. So what do I do? I can't ask Eli. I can't ask the old church. Stop sliding in the DMs. Stop asking people. Stop seeing how many people like the post. Come on, somebody. God says, no, when it's me, I want you to say servant. I mean, Lord, your servant is listening. Woo! Because Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, as the word goes out from my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. Come on, somebody. That means if God said it, it's going to happen. That means if God declare it, it's just a matter of time. That, come on, somebody. It's not if it's going to happen. It's when it's going to happen. So what do I do when I got a word? The Bible says right here that Eli just looked at. Samuel says, if God shows up one more time, don't ask me. Go to sleep on it. Look Look at somebody and say, go to sleep on it. Stop worrying, go to sleep on it. Stop crying, go to sleep on it. Stop travailing, go to sleep on it. If God said it, as the word goes out from my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. There's nothing missing. 